Hey gang, Jackson here, and today we're gonna talk about a pretty important topic, uh, one that gets a lot of airplay among cat lovers and cat not so lovers and everybody in between, and that is being allergic to cats. Man, there are a lot of people out there allergic to cats. There's a lot of people who think they're allergic to cats, and there's even more people who are afraid that they might be allergic to cats. So I think it's time to clear up some misconceptions, uncover the truth about it, and I also wanna talk about some common sense things that you can do so that you can actually be allergic and live with cats harmoniously, successfully, and without a whole bunch of like, you know, allergic resentment. Now, I wanna start off with a story because it's both funny and uh, very relevant at the same time. So, as you might or might not know, I was a working musician for many, many years, which most of the time I was a non-working musician, but that's a different story. Anyway, I was playing in a band for a number of years where my drummer was horribly allergic to cats. So bad that after our first couple of rehearsals, he came and he said, listen, I either cannot play with you anymore, or this is what you're gonna have to do. And here was the solution. Our rehearsal space was a sterile space. It was a no cat space, which meant that every time I came in for rehearsal, I had to completely take off my clothes and change into my clean clothes. Uh, and there were sometimes I didn't have any clean clothes, so you know I sucked it up for the sake of rock and roll and played in my underwear. My drummer, after a couple of years of doing this, he started going out with, uh, with someone new and he went over to her house for the first time and they were hanging out and they were just kicking it and all of a sudden her cat walks in the room. And he, for a second, started reflexively coughing and itching and whatever and then he realized he wasn't allergic to her cat. Wait a minute, I thought I was allergic to cats. So we're gonna get to that in a little bit. That's a very important piece of the puzzle. So let's break down what it is that you're allergic to in the first place, okay? One of the first big misconceptions is that we are allergic to a cat's fur. What you're allergic to is a protein called FELD1. FELD1 is a protein that is contained in a cat's saliva. When a cat cleans themselves, then that saliva dries on their fur, it flies off in the form of dander, and kaboom, that's what you're allergic to. So that's actually good news. Bear with me, because the thing is, just because you have allergies to cats, you don't. It means you're allergic to that protein, and different cats make different amounts of that protein. That's why my drummer friend was able to go over to a new girlfriend's house and not be allergic to her cat, because her cat did not put off that egregious amount of FELD1 that would usually trigger his allergies. So that's good news for you guys. That does mean that you could be allergic to some cats and not all of them, and you could have a cat in your life. The first thing that you want to do if you're allergic to cats and you want to continue living with cats or you would love to get a cat into your life is go to see an allergist. It is so important for them to be able to do an allergen test on you to confirm that you're allergic to FELD1 and then to determine a proper course of action. For instance, over-the-counter antihistamines may do the trick if you are moderately or less moderately allergic to cats. Now, if you really have a big allergy, you can do what I did. When I was a kid, I was allergic to everything, including animals of all stripes. In fact, I was probably allergic to zebras. But my mom took me to an allergist and took me through a course of immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is getting shots, allergy shots. You get them about twice a week for about six months. Then you get boosters for a few years after that. And let me tell you something, folks. I wouldn't be working this job to this day if it weren't for those shots. I am now allergy-free. I'm not saying everybody will be, but it's a great thing to try uh, if you really want to live with animals. And who doesn't want to live with animals? You want to live with animals, right? So let's deal with some of the more obvious things that you can do to keep uh, FELD1, that dried up nasty allergen from floating around your house. The first thing that you can do is think about the things that the allergen itself would bind to all over your house. I mean, anything that with uh, fabric like this on it is going to be a trap 
for those things. So first of all, of course, vacuuming on a regular basis is pretty important. And the great thing is that vacuums themselves have come a long way, especially with the advent of HEPA filters and how a lot of these vacuums have HEPA filters in them, which of course you want. At the same token, when we're talking about HEPA filters, in my house, we have air filters in every room. It helps with smell, and it also helps with any particular allergens that are floating around. These HEPA filters, if you're getting an actual HEPA and not just one of those knockoffs, can reduce up to 99% of floating allergens in your house. Not just cats, but everything else as well. Also, you can decrease the amount of surfaces that hold on to dander around your house. For instance, instead of having drapes, you can have blinds. Something that you can clean, not have to vacuum, and doesn't just hold on to things. Same thing with carpets versus hardwood floors. I know it sounds like a sacrifice, but hey man, if uh, you're allergic and you really want to keep hanging out with your cat family members, which I really hope you want to do, it's a pretty small sacrifice to make. Brushing your cat, that's important no matter how you slice it, but it's even more important with uh, cats that you're allergic to because of course you would love to remove that dander from them and to remove dead hairs from them before they go flying off into the ether and get up your nose and on your clothes and everything else. Try if you can to have a non-allergic family member do the brushing. Uh, if you have a catio, you can bring them out to the catio to brush them so the hair flies off in another direction. Uh, you can even brush while wearing a mask and that will help those hairs going up your nose. But, but that's a great proactive thing you can do and it's also really good for your cat. One misconception, which I have talked about before, is that bathing your cat on a regular basis will help this problem. It really won't. Uh, it actually strips your cats of their natural oils, which those oils are not what you're allergic to. It is the saliva. And no matter how many times you bathe your cat, they're still gonna have saliva. Another thing that you wanna do for your cat anyway, but it also helps with allergies to a certain degree, is trimming their nails. Because again, they scratch themselves, they get some of that protein under their nails, they give you a little love scratch, and now you got it under your skin. So just taking the points off your cat's nails on a regular basis, again, is something that you should be doing anyhow, but even better if you're allergic. Now one other lesser known uh, source of the allergen is in a cat's urine. So another thing to do that's really important is to clean your cat's litter box regularly, and I'm talking about multiple times a day, to make sure that the urine isn't just sitting there. Also, likewise, you wanna use a litter that clumps well and doesn't track all over the place. Just a really good litter is going to help. And finally, you know, this is that excuse that you have to tell your significant other uh, or roommate, hey, you gotta scoop the litter if you wanna keep the cat because, you know, I can't do it. <laughs> Another thing you can do is make sure that you're washing your cat's bedding fairly regularly, or at the very least, you're using a little sticky roller and making sure that you're picking up the hair off of their beds along with the rest of your furniture. But again, the less that you have in the house that'll hold on to this protein, to the hair, to the dander, is going to help you in the long run. Now. Here's a touchy subject for me and anyone else who cares about the welfare of cats. Hypoallergenic cats. Boy, oh boy, man, if you wanna talk about something that just gets me going, hypoallergenic cats are that thing. There was actually a craze a couple of years ago where people were like, no, these cats are hypoallergenic, and then all of a sudden, people are going out and buying expensive breeds of cats, thinking that they're not gonna be allergic, they wind up being allergic, and then they rehome these cats. And now we're creating an entire population of purebred cats looking for homes because people thought they'd be not allergic, and irresponsible breeders were, were touting that hypoallergenic nonsense. Here's the truth, folks. Listen, here's the truth. No cat is hypoallergenic. All cats make the protein FELD1 that's in their saliva and in their dander. All cats. That said, there are certain breeds who have been known to be less allergenic, but why would you take that chance? There is no reason to take that chance when there's no guarantee whatsoever. Even Sphinx, the hairless cats, they still make the protein, there's still a chance that you will be allergic to them. So please, don't try to change the cat in order to be able to live with them. Change your environment, do what you can to change yourself, and you can live with these guys. Let's just not go out there and create a market 
for a cat that just doesn't exist. And we wind up rehoming beloved family members just because we're afraid that somebody else is going to have an allergic reaction. So, you guys, there it is. Hopefully I've shed some light on the truth and the fallacies uh, surrounding being allergic to cats. So let's recap. First, FELD1. It's a protein secreted in a cat's saliva. It is the allergen, not their fur themselves, but this protein. You may not have symptoms at all with one cat and have a lot of symptoms with another. You can really do a lot to make sure that your home is as free of FELD1 as you could possibly make it so that your allergic response isn't that bad. Brushing your cat on the regular is so very important. And then there's what you can do to help build up resistance. Yeah, you can take medicine for this on a daily basis. And over the counter, antihistamine might do the trick. Immunotherapy is a real thing. It helped me live with cats and it could help you as well. The first thing to do, of course, is to go see an allergist. Hopefully that works. Guys, if you know somebody who's allergic, if you know somebody who comes into your house and starts sneezing and coughing, those are the people who need to watch this video. So please share it along. And at the same time, don't forget that you can get these words of wisdom on a regular basis. Uh, if you just make sure to hit that bell, make sure that you subscribe and check out all these other places where you can catch up with me. And I hope you do. All right, until next time, you guys, light, love, and mojo to you. Achoo! Meow.